everyone. I'm Sarah Christensen with One Sage's View Astrology. Welcome back. I am continuing on the promo tour, kind of diving into the astrology for Nicola Coughlin and Luke Newton. And this video is going to be on Italy. We're going to focus on May 8th and I believe May 11th, right around that time frame when they were in Milan and when they were in Verona. So I'm going to be looking at the charts of those particular stops on the promo tour and to kind of see what the plan in transit were activating at that time. So Milan and Verona came after the stop in Australia. So they were disoriented, I think, a little bit from the jet lag. And I think more, I think Luke mentions that in an interview, and I'll put the interview link in the description below of the ones that I revisited to uh, kind of assess what people were looking at in the perceptions. Because I think someone mentioned in the comments of this particular uh, Milan interviews when she was in the white dress with the, the bow, kind of had a bow in that dress. It was like a jumper dress or something. And in that interview, interview it was mentioned that this is like the one interview where they're sitting far apart and there's like a flower a bouquet of flowers behind them an arrangement of flowers and they have them sit that's the most distance they have in the interviews and so I think it's kind of funny that the perception of people were like oh they're sitting far apart and maybe that sets some of the tone for the interviews but I think it's that they are a little bit tired kind of recovering from the jet lag of having bounced so far on the planet between London to Australia. I mean, that's a huge amount of time zone jumps from where they are. And then they have to bounce back and uh, into Europe. And so it's kind of the same. It's a huge leaps in, in time zone jumps for them to, to recover. So that's got to be disoriented for your own. Um, I've traveled extensively and to Europe and also to India. So I know kind of the extensiveness of having to travel travel 14 to 16 hours. Um, it's a lot of, <laughs> to recover that in your body when you're, you know, how we operate on planet Earth. So it's it's a bit when you're you're first taking those big jumps for, for that distance of travel. So I think that's part of being a little tiny off, but not bad. I mean, given con considering all things, right? So there might have been a little bit of tension or somewhere on the face uh, during the Milan interviews where I think in one that one interview I think Nicola jumps in on a sequence of, of sharing that Luke is doing and you know there's a little bit on his face maybe a little bit like oh she cut me off <laughs> So I don't think it was, it, you know, goes beyond like, oh, you know, the normal kind of cadence of their communication and um, and is her natural instinctual nature maybe to be a little bit more forward in the speaking because she has Mars and Aries. She's going to be active like that. So it is something of a skill to temper your speech when you have Mars and Aries in the third house, okay? So that will take time. And when you're tired, you're gonna be a little bit less measured and um, holding yourself kind of, you know, in the rhythm. Um, I think when she's had her rest, she's more fluid with, you know, kind of, paying attention to maybe those subtle cues. So I, I, I don't think it's hugely negative. Maybe some people are like, what's the tension? What's going on with that little tiny bit? But it's more maybe that they're tired and that they are separate chairs. When they're closer together, I think there's an ability to read the energy a little bit more positively because later in that same set of period of time of interviews in Milan, when she's still in the white dress, they put them together. They actually bring the chairs closer together when they do the friend zone and they do the friend zone and love paddles interview so it's not an interview it's kind of more of a game they play <laughs> well they do ask them questions so so I want to point that out because I, I you know such an interesting thing with the intensity of interest with the fandom I think there's also a, a huge amount of projection that is happening by the fandom and their desire to see something or to explore what is that what is that what is that it's just part of that Pluto Scorpio generation Pluto Libra generation and even a bit of Gen X and being entertained. I think Gen X may individuals of Pluto in Virgo pick it up a little bit differently as I do. We have a desire to be entertained just the same because we were latchkey kids <laughs> back in the day. But I think it's more about what we might go, oh, well, it's a subtle cue. Yeah, I mean, that happens, but it's not like something to get too excited about, right? That's my perception. Okay. So I want to dive into the astrology, look at Milan, look at Verona. I think there are other interesting things when in Milan when they 
did the um, the photo shoot and they're standing in front of the, I think it's a Bridgerton sign, but they're, you know, in their Versace or whatever. I can't remember what she's wearing, but it's the white dress, the short dress and um, how he is holding her as they are fixing them before the photo is taken. So it, that's an interesting energy that I think is instinctual. And as he's, you know, trying to figure out how to stand in that photo is, you know, we see a little bit of the nervous or the anxiousness out of Luke as he's trying to figure out hand in pocket, not in pocket kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is a lot of energy on these two individuals who are total introverts, right? Like I think Nicola has more of an extroverted personality in some ways, but she's identified her as an introvert doing, you know, these extrovert things. And I end up identify with that because I can see myself as more introvert, but then go into extrovert mode, kind of a hybrid of sorts, um, based on the energy of, you know, what's in my chart. She has a very similar chart. She has Sagittarius a lot. And then she has the Capricorn that pull that's in her 12th house that kind of pulls her back into, and her son is in the 12th house. I would absolutely. And her moon is in earth on the fourth house, which is very private moon. So these are things that like, it totally makes sense why she would call herself an introvert. So, and of course, I could, you know, argue the same for Luke to have the moon in the 12th house and moon in Cancer, that I'm making that argument, of course, and um, with his Mars in Cancer as well in the 12th house, and then to have that Scorpio Pluto at the bottom of house, which, you know, pulls that energy inward and down to, you know, kind of, you need to have time alone to have introspective, to understand this thing that's under transformation. So he will count on a lot of what's going on with others by the 7th house and that, that mix of energies in his 7th house. Anyway, I want to point that out. So I think that's helpful to understand kind of like the whole picture of the energy of the moment and season three, part one has not dropped yet. So there's building energy, there's expectation, there's excitement, but there's a not, people don't know yet what that will, how that will take off and how they will feel about it until they actually get to the part one release on May 16th. So at May 8th, they're eight days away from that, right? So it continues to build as they build towards that part one. And then that will then lead them down to the three days after when they are releases May 16th. And then a few days later, they are down in Rio. So this is a fast amount of travel that they're jumping across the globe. So they're, that's incredible work from their part, a huge work ethic to do all those things. And, you know, they are going to have a little bit of like, where am I? I'm discombobulated. And by the time they get the real, like, oh, let's have fun. Um, those kind of things. But Milan, I think they're still having fun. And Verona, I think there's a lot of fun and playfulness that haps, happens in Verona, especially when she's in, in another white dress. So there's a lot of white dress going on. Like, I think that's purity and innocence out in interesting as that that's being played out in what she wears different dress and uh in Verona so when they arrive in Verona and the videos about Luke being right next to her in her personal space that was in the videos but I think by fans and then in Verona when they are I think in um, the Palazzo there all the couples come and there's a big huge engagement thing that's happening in front of their eyes and how much there's some innuendo that's thrown around by them behind you know and caught on video as she playfully asks you know Luke you know will you marry me and he's like yeah you know and then you know they're just joking around but how much is truth in the joking right so we got excited you know it just the way they are playful together excites people you know some of it is totally innocent but they're there is a little bit of truth in how we joke, right? Like what is underneath everything in, in our desire, like what we really desire. And so I think that's, uh, and plus Italy is such a passionate, beautiful country. And I'm sure when you go to the balcony for Romeo and Juliet, that just amps the romance, <laughs> you know? And then I think there were also some fan videos caught or not videos, but maybe just pictures of when they're at a cafe, which is, it's lovely. That is like paradise to be at a cafe in Europe to them sharing the photos and him looking at the photos of them on the balcony. I mean, it's kind of like having that moment to have an introspective of like, this is what we're creating and having them, you know, have us visible to them kind of observing that. So I think that amps up the energy that amps up the interest and, you know, what's really going on there? How much attention is it paid into it? But I think it's a 
also, I mean, if you if you had pictures taken of you, even if it's for a promo tour, you would want to know how they were coming out and what they look like because that's your you, that's your image being used for this promo. And so I doesn't surprise me that that would be the case. It doesn't surprise me that they would be looking at it. But there's also the potential of mm, there's a fascination with each other and, and that as well. It's kind of amping up like the innuendo that's underneath it all as well that's what kind of gets picked up by people another thing is i think there's a story and i, I do believe it's true because it was shared by nickel that she um this was in another interview that she did i can't remember which one it was but she did was alone in an interview and she was describing looking at the images of that balcony photo shoot and how Luke had actually tripped up there and she had reached and grabbed him to not follow for goodness sakes, wouldn't that be? But I think you can see that in our astrology as well. And I'll point that out for Verona. Okay, so we're getting into it to explore uh, the energies, the archetypal energy from the planetary transits for Nick and Luca, Nick and Luke for Milan, Italy and Verona, Italy. And uh, I look forward to your comments. It's always fun to see what you guys have to say and you're sharing and what you observe, what your perceptions were, because there's a lot of what's your perception of these moments, right? And then, um, you know, kind of like understand that in the arc of things happening from the events in Australia, which were the videos before this. And then, of course, I did Rio later, but it's kind of like it went Australia and then they jumped to Italy and then they jumped back to New York, New York to Rio, Rio to Toronto, Toronto back to Europe and then to eventually Dublin, Galway, London. Right. So there's so many things having us jumping all over the place. But I think it's fun what you guys think about Italy and what was there was so much revealed in Italy. Um, and I think it, Italy is a, a key uh, location, especially for Luke and what it reveals to him. And I'll go into that later because it has to do with the Venus um, and because Italy is a very Venusian country. Okay, so when you're in Italy, uh, the Venusian part of your chart. So Venus, where is it in your chart? Um, so where's the Taurus in your chart? These are very, very active during that time when you're there within your own chart. And also that we had just come off that total solar, solar eclipse of April 8th. I think that is activating a lot of things related to the Venus. And yeah, because the kickoff of so much of the international travel happens out of the Australia charts. And you can see that, that the Venus was at 19. It was sitting right on that degree of the total solar eclipse. And so it's very, very, a part, it's very much a part of the promotor and kind of everything that spills out in the chaos <laughs> later on that it builds, okay? I think that's it. Okay, so we're going to dive in. Um, if you have any questions or if you're interested in your own astrology, you can visit me at onesagesview.com and you can book a reading with me or you can also reach out to me on Instagram if that's your preferred reach out. You can reach out to me on One Sage's View. I do not reach out per se to anyone from the social media directly off of Instagram. I think that gets too confusing. So I wait for people to reach out to me. And but I will respond to people who come through my website, of course, um, and in comments on the community pages here on YouTube. So thank you so much. And let's go. Okay, we're going to start on the Italy chart. So let's dive in here. So the first one I am looking at is Milan, Italy. And we know that they were at the Bulgari Hotel on May 8th for the press tour. So I believe this is a noon chart that I did um, just to kind of get a, a kind of a point in the day that um, they could have had things maybe at 1030 that day, but I just did a noon chart to get a general sense, okay? I know that I like to look at the moon, so let's dive into Luke's chart. This is Luke's chart here, and this is Nicholas' chart here. So let's, uh, let me get my, my little highlighter so I can kind of point as I go along. Okay, so what I like to look at is where's the moon? And there, when they are in Milan, the moon has, it's a new moon. So you can see that it's a new moon. So this is kind of giving them a little bit of a refresh after April, where the the total solar eclipse um, was so uh, important for April. Uh, but that, because it was such a significant total solar eclipse, it will take time to manifest some things across the, the months after and even into next year i kind of give a solar eclipse kind of the sensitivity in the chart for at least a year and if it's hitting a progress chart it has a longer kind of thing that's 
that the individual may be having to come through as a part of that activation of that, which I talked about on Luke's chart for his progress chart. And um, because it's like an ex extended of a period of time that we're looking at when we talk about progress charts. But let's in Milan, we're looking at the situation to the moon is now new. It's just past the sun, just a little bit. So, and the moon is conjunct Uranus. So there is a potential for something to happen that is activating something very publicly for Luke. It'll be very visible versus something behind the scenes that happens for Nicola because the, the moon and the sun, when they're new for that cycle at that moment, May 8th, is um, activating the bottom of her chart. So a little bit more not visible, okay? Even though she's in the public eye, what's more visible will be things that are Mars related because the top of her chart has Scorpio. The Venus, you know, would be the ninth house and then Jupiter in the, in the 11th house. When planets are transiting that top of her chart like that, that's what's going to be more visible immediately to the public. When things are happening below, it's not as visible, okay? Even though she's presenting herself to the world, that's very much her Mars active and her career and these kinds of things. But what it's more like, I think the moment that mm, Luke is, you know, maybe having something on his face in the Milan interviews, maybe from an interruption, which is her Mars activating, being activated by the Mars, that is a little bit more visible on his face because it's at the top of his chart, okay? I hope that makes sense. So, so the moon being conjunct Uranus and then, then then it's about to go over. So in in that period of time, I think this is going to set off a lot of chaos with those who are perceiving these individuals because the moon at the top of the chart connecting with Uranus is kind of like opening something up. Now, the moon is feeling day to day it's um it's kind of like the emotions that we will uh we're always fluid with our emotion our feeling nature the feelings come first and then emotions right the feelings are instinctual first and then emotion travels after that right whatever it's going to be so the moon in transit going and the, that's a uranus that's in transit so it's actively showing so something's going to burst forward from the moment and then also have it be expanded upon. So that moon is new. So it's a cycle that's saying this is a new cycle. Something's going to burst forward and then it's going to be acted upon. Um, and the act, what it's, what's being act, acted upon is the perception of romance, things of the body, uh, desire, sensuality, all these things are important to kind of keep in mind for that moon and what it's revealing for Luke, especially in relationship, because Luke's chart has, to me, the rising sign in Leo with all this Aquarius. So anything Luke does, there's a partnership kind of thing involved that has a react you know, kind of a mirroring effect or a reactive effect. So whatever he's doing, it's automatically going to be visible that there's a partner of some sort involved and we'll be going to witness that. So when the, the transiting moon is highlighting all the sensuality and then there's some unexpected components that are rising from that cycle, this is a moon that just started and as it progresses through the, the zodiac before the next new moon, because this is May 8th, so it's peaking as it goes towards the release date, right? And peaking in, yeah, because it has to go through Libra when they are in, and when they get to, to Rio. Yeah, so that it's kind of a peaking period of time as it goes towards the full moon, and then the full moon, and then what that carries out. So that's in the seed of the moments in, in Milan. So the video of them just talking and they have the two chairs apart and what that kind of gives a perception of some sort. Some people perceived, oh, there's tension, what's going on, you know, and then how that, you know, might be looked at and discussed later and as things get dissected down the line by the fandom, right? But it's sensuality is you know, very much in focus, romance is in focus because that's what they're, they're selling the show, right? They're promoting the show, but it's also that it's a new cycle and it's going to, you know, accentuate that. And at the same time, Venus is right there 
also adding and, and moving through Taurus. And it will peak by the time they get to, well, it's peaking as they release May, May 16th. And then it's still, Venus is absolutely still moving through Taurus, even when they're down in Rio de Janeiro. So that's a very important, because Venus is the, is the ruler of Taurus. And Venus is also the ruler of Libra, which accentuates the south node movement over Nicholas. This is, Lu yeah, this is Luke's uh, Jupiter, but it is Libra south node for Nicola, right? So it's adding as well. So it's, it's really adding something to the dimensions of their relationship that they've had a relationship for five years at this point, right? They met in 2019, so five years. So attraction that may have been amplified as they got towards their season. I mean, there could have been just professional, professional attraction, but not acting upon it. Maybe some acting upon it in 2022, 2023. I mean, definitely they're having to act out very intimate scenes in 2022. And even the wedding scene was in 2023, right? Those were, that's when the production was moving on those. So I think it's important to point out like, the kind of everything that they have to create in the 22, 23, they moved on the relationship of interest, but then pulled back. Like I think did happen in early 23. I think things were said. I think there would have been moments of attraction or that the intimacy scenes brought in the interest. And I think that continued. And then it was like a big question mark, but then I think there was a pullback of some sort and then, you know, having to move through that, but then pushed down and did other things and maybe uh, looking at dating other people. I don't know uh, the extents of that in 23, but I, I definitely think they were off in their own worlds after that and then had to come back together for the events of the promo tour. So the promo tour, you know, kind of everything in the promo tour, I think is like the, I still think there's something of the, the past life relationship. It's like, okay, here is all the elements for the past life scenario for Nicola and also for Luke to like digest and have to have a combination of experiences that bring their relationship forward, bring the same kind of energies from the past forward. And now it's really getting, it's kind of bleeding through. So the attraction that was happening in 22 and 23, that was absolutely real, but suppressed now even more. I think it's even more so. So even though they said, yeah, our chemistry was suppressed and then we just brought it out when, and that was absolutely true. But I think there was also an action that was taken to suppress actual real feelings and desires that they wanted to act on that were halted, uh, pushed down for whatever reasons, like a personal decision. But I think that sets up the past life scenario as it relates to Nicola. I, I'm going to hold on that. I think that is absolutely probably kind of the mix of things that make everything operate then for Luke's catalyst moment on June 12th. It goes together. So there's just an important lesson that has to be learned on both souls. So I could argue soulmates, yes, but soulmates with karma that have to still work out something that if you want the relationship, you have to work out the thing that you faced before, but maybe you didn't get to finish moving through some kind of difficulty that hurt the relationship or maybe someone's life was ended and it was never resolved, right? Like some, one of the two could have had a, something happen in the life that then took them out of the life. And so that it never resolved, right? Even though there was true love to and true desire to pursue the relationship. And so there could be blocks on both for the different scenarios that put them in that moment. If that makes any sense, I hope that makes sense. A lot of past life when you're looking at evolutionary astrology is kind of looking at where did the souls get stuck? And oftentimes I would say a good portion of relationships have past life scenarios that if it is not the actual individual soul, you're getting a reframe of some lesson, even with if it's another partner, because the, some partners are there and they're do, very earthbound experiences and they, they connect and, and it works on different levels, right? But there is something that's being learned in the past life uh, of one soul, absolutely, and another lesson for the other soul. But there are some, I think, many relationships where the two souls that had once been together are coming back because it was, un they have unfinished connection. 
And, and so there's a desire to reconnect. And so to me, I have ample examples of that in my own astrology practice with individuals like, oh, yes, I can see where the connection was. And you're going to stumble over this. And this person's going to stumble over this. And now you're coming back to untie those knots and reweave it. Can you reweave it? That's your evolution. The, the concept of the relationship is that you can evolve. Relationships offer, you know, committed, loving relationships have the opportunity to evolve individuals beyond, uh, it's hard to, it's like you have to have that partner to do that work, right? I don't know. Yeah, the soul to have that evolution, but it's creating something that's definitely like a bigger, grander thing than just the one plus one. It, it's some, creating something amazingly profound for both souls in the combination of it, right? So I hope that, hopefully that's clear. <laughs> So Luke is definitely getting a lot of what I call activated. There's a couple of things I want to say about what's being activated for Luke. I'm actually going to clean that up. It's a little bit. What's activating for Luke in Milan are a couple of things. The accident of tripping over his feet is one of them. <laughs> that might have been like, oh, geez, that was close. But I think it's more like he's got recently the Mars was tripping over his own Venus <laughs> and probably applying to his midheaven. I don't think his midheaven is exactly five degrees. I think it may be deeper into Aries, but I'd have to, until I rectify the chart, we're making an estimate. But to me, that Mars is actively moving towards the conjunction with his angle. Okay. And so when that hits the angle, it has a more powerful effect, instinctual kind of, or um, you have to be, you have to take courage here, Luke. That's the Mars hitting it, right? Or you have to think about what actions you're going to take based on things that are said, things that are revealed to you during this period of time. So that's what's potent about the Mars transit through his, his Aries of his ninth house by being in a distant place, which is when you're, you do foreign travel, you, you're leaving your home, you're leaving and you're going on an airplane in the place of a foreign country, you're going to have some experiences that are going to highlight some things for you. You may feel more anxious, you may feel more insecure because that Aries squares his cancer. You know, Aries squares cancer. So it's going to highlight these, these subconscious vulnerabilities he has, okay, about what action to take, about how he's perceived or what he feels. Like, is this safe? <laughs> you know, that's kind of underneath in the unconscious mind for Luke, okay? So the moon in Taurus is sextile. This energy here, like at 20, yeah, all the, the sun is approaching, but I would more put like the Jupiter is sextile to his own moon. Okay. So that's actively activating it and making it more felt. Okay. So he will feel the sensuality that's, and, and he'll feel the attention. He'll feel the, the grand scope of things that are happening. And the, I mean, of course he has probably an interest in the fashions and all of that, that are, you know, there's a bit of him reconfiguring his, you know, his identity in the public eye with all that Taurus. That's all getting reconfigured. It's going to light a fire in the public as well. And so that's why all that interest will happen because there's all those eyeballs on him. And it will continue to grow. A lot of people came into the season three interest for Bridgerton based on what they were doing in the promo tour because it hadn't been done before, right? And it was landing on social media and picking up interest beyond what was before. A lot of people who had just watched season three before they had watched any other parts of Bridgerton, which I find fascinating. But anyway, that's important to point out. A lot of energy in his 10th house of career, okay? And that there is going to be something he trips up on. Okay, because there's so much energy that comes from the Uranus being there. And Uranus being in Taurus, is it's still in Taurus. So it's still activating and kind of what I call creating little volcanoes for him to figure out what's coming up and emerging from the depths of his psyche because that's opposite his Pluto in Scorpio and the psyche in, in Scorpio. This is really starting to reconfigure and transform him at the deepest of levels of his consciousness and his psyche, okay? And what he considers, it's really reshaping how his lens will be about his identity. I mean, that's what it's doing, okay? As he moves through this these moments and we get to witness part of that. And, but it's also, he's getting a little bit activated 
a lot activated actually. All this energy is across it. So ascendant in Leo, that's our assumption based on what I've said before, his Leo, and that's why he um, mirrors so dynamically with, especially with Nicola with her Aquarius rising. And I think her Aquarius is like zero one, you know, one, somewhere between zero degrees and two degrees. I think that's where I would put her because that's been a, and she's going through a huge trajectory of change for her own identity. But his is more of, he's got a, he's, he's got Chiron in, in Leo. So that's going to be, and that's being activated by the noon chart and the the lot of fortune is activating that opposition of his chart so all the the video images and that are picked up in Italy will then be amplified across the social media that's the aquarius and then how people di dissect that but it's his he's trying to figure out what am i what's my identity in all of this this is getting amplified so fast it's hard for him to keep up with it right he will have a harder time because of the way it mirrors him it, it's like it's harder he doesn't have the sun in the first house he has the sun in the second he has to get that feedback via nicola so it takes a bit of time because his sun is in and saturn and mercury um are in aquarius which those are fixed signs and anything with saturn tied into it takes time to integrate it so it'll take time for him to understand this connection that he has with the mirroring effect with nicola but also with other people that have that heavy aquarian in the seventh house but definitely nicola but it's also it will take time for him to figure out what's going on with the other person in his life because what might be said he also visits again to italy so when he goes back to italy post promo tour that also activates again his in his conscious is subconscious about you know how the energy is so different for him but while he has nicola close to him there's a different way he can pick it up and then her gentleness in a lot of ways that she probably communicates with him behind the scenes is going to be very he will pick up it as more nurturing and grounded because she has the moon in taurus so he will lean into that right so that is something that's very visible because her moon would be in Taurus and visible to us in that reception and how she appears to him in in the public eye I hope that makes sense so we pick up that she's caring we pick up that there's sensitivities and yes so I hopefully that points that out okay so the, all the Taurus energy how it activates but it's also the transiting ascent you know the, the ascendant moves pretty quickly but definitely at the you know the height of the day that's how that's being activated as the time goes on how that also could be very tiring because of how many interviews are they trying to execute and, and do in one day and then how many they have the next day but they before they have to travel to get to i mean because that's the eighth ninth i think they're eighth and ninth for sure in milan and then they are uh, I know they're in Verona by May 11th. So maybe they're traveling on the 10th and then get ready, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't know if they were in Verona by the 10th. It could be that they were in Verona by the 10th, but I think that was the travel day. So that, that's my assumption. So what else? So bouncing over to, you can see all the Taurus energy for Nicola down in the base of her chart. This is activating, it's recently activated her moon her kind of stable, her nurturing self. We get a grounded sense of her because she has her moon and her sun in earth signs. And that shows, it shows a lot of stability on her part. She's more grounded, but she has a very high velocity Mars in Aries that allows her to communicate very quickly. And then that helps her be in the public eye with she has an absolutely stunning Jupiter in Pisces, which then rules that. So she has a very blessed Jupiter. If I were to say, you know, Jupiter in Pisces, very blessed. But it does have the intensity of Saturn. So it's activating her a little bit for the, you know, I've got to, you know, be on for work, even though, and I have, so I have limits about, put on me about what I can say, because we haven't had, we haven't got to the release date. So they have to be controlled in what they articulate during the interviews, but still so show up joyful, but there may be suppressing some of their personal feelings that that Saturn would make it difficult. So there will be bleed through. There will be things that sneak out, you know, that's Saturn in Pisces. It takes the shape of the water. And because the Neptune is also at 29 degrees of Pisces, 
is there will be kind of leaks out of stuff that happened during the interviews and the perception because there will be a perception of illusion and then people will take off it with it in different directions right and there's no controlling that that jupiter next to uranus tells us in the transit that it's going to be heightened and just chaotic like it's going to be huge in scale what it's going to do and it's going to be chaotic but it has an also an operative of the uranus has a it, it can say i'm gonna it has like a, a tone to it that has a, the it can liberate something that's been stuck as well and i think that's the most important thing about the what it might be helping in nicholas conscious like in her in her how she identifies some parts of herself and how that can be liberating so through these experiences it has a liberating effect for her okay i think that was helpful for that so milan is really interesting in the interviews that we got i know that also it's very important to note that it's very important that not only is Mars in Aries is just recently passed. I think may, Mars at zero degrees, whatever minutes to Nicola's own Mars would have given her a Mars return. So she has a new Mars cycle that's now underway. So she's being able to express herself in new ways. And it's something brand new uh, that's Aries, raw energy is coming forward. Instincts are coming forward. And she's on also a cycle of when you have your lunar node return about her age, hers is happening, you know, recently that return when you're in your mid thirties like that is so key because you have other things that are kind of key and opening up as well. In her case, she has a Mars return happening at the same time and her North node is in Aries. So there's this like double opening, like it's almost like double doors opening for her to like communicate what perception is she picking up on when she's expressing herself and also then the, how that shapes the arc of her life. It's huge. What is happening in these moments on the promo tour has such a takeoff for her. It's amplifying that energy, just taking it off. And of course, during that, after the promo tour, I believe she is getting signed up by a whole nother level of, you know, a professional agency for her acting career. So she's gone to the, you know, the A-list, C-A-A, you know, that high tier. And so, yeah, I mean, she's living living the dream and i think her chart just reminds me with you know a couple of planets like she has that are supporting that takeoff as well okay mars in its own sign in aries so it's actually very potent mars she has jupiter in pisces and it's in its own domain so it, it makes it very powerful like for her potential that how much money she can earn and her own self-confidence and time and then also that jupiter is responsible for you know this 11th house of groups and what she does with groups and but it's the ruler of her midheaven which is kind of that public persona that everybody will perceive and fall in love with her mars being in its own domain makes her her house of of career really really potent and people become obsessed with her obsessed and that's the scorpio pluto and scorpio a, an obsession that happens but imagine though in her early career she was dealing with a lot of difficult criticism about her image her body image you know the critics or whatnot and she still battles it but i think she's matured into like that you know whatever I've, I've got this <laughs> you know what i mean but i'm sure she still receives it um and has to battle it and maybe even battle that within the conscious because all things considered it's kind of setting up like her to expand her awareness of um her north node is in aries it's like you're you're here to lean into being courageous. You're leaning into having um, a voice that has a lot of power to it. And it might have a little bit of bite, but you need the bite because of what you have to traverse over this based on all the things in, in you know, the, the archetypal arc of where you're going in your evolution. Because the past life was more Libra and maybe... I think that Libra in that, that ninth house is also a consideration about religion and the tones that religion may have had on the suppression of the fem the feminine. And she has a she has also a, a Venus in Sagittarius, which so reminds me of that, like being in groups and being a female and maybe and have some relig religious undertones and that maybe have set up the situation that would have made a, a, a relationship with a friend difficult and what would have transpired. It would have left a, an emotional wound that she's working out and it's important to look at okay that's all in the chart but it can 
come out through these different ways that she's expressing herself as Nicola Coughlin and what she's framed as being an actress. So it has to come through relationships from her experiences and more than likely is going to be very visible, but it depends on who she's going to connect with. You know, and but it to me, when you have the past life, it's going to probably line up with a past life relationship that needs to go back together to work out an issue that was not completed in another time. But it has other layers to the archetype, which I think is important. Um, what else is important to point out here? Oh, in Milan, we also have Chiron and Mercury. Now, Mercury in April had gone through the retrograde around the eclipse, and it was a part of the eclipse, and then and then active it. It was also active with the the Mercury in Australia in the you know in the sign of Aries. So here we have it May eight. It's coming back and you know marching towards you know in its transit towards leaving Aries to go into Taurus, which well, that's only a few days before that happens. So as they approach the release or at least definitely definitely that in rio de janeiro but at the release and the new york premiere in the release it's kind of leaving aries and going into taurus but here in milan it's still in aries so the communication is more direct more raw and it has a, a tinge of of the chiron so there's a woundedness in the transiting of that so there might be moments where it's picked up of do you hear me do, can you see me what i'm saying that i don't think it's necessarily direct it can be taken as direct because in some of the games that they play and it might have been in the tension of some of the interviews where they say something but it's like did you, you know, maybe they don't say it out loud, but in the body language, there might be a little moment of the bleed through of seeing, do you hear me? Or can you hear what I'm saying? Because this underneath it all is my truth. You know, the raw truth of the matter, but it's not like it's been said out loud, direct, you know, in a way that's um, together alone. You know what I mean? It's, it's more the innuendo that's all underneath it all, but there's a tinge of can you see this about me that's in that in the tone and that's on both them parts so it's uh, in her third house you know that's where the mercury and the chiron are so it's definitely in her communication that's being sent out and to me they're all in his receiving a, when they're in a foreign place right like ninth house or what is his belief about something right because it's it's tipping in it's in his ninth house ninth house is archetypally about our belief how you know from ast it's also astrology but i'm not going to bring in astrology i don't think they were doing the astrology to doom stuff at that point i think that was earlier recorded earlier and it's more like with mars uh, so close to his venus it's more like he's getting activated about things in the career so his his focus is about how how he's perceived in the public more and what to say if i say something wrong what does it look like like that's more how I see how that's activating Luke, okay? But I think there's so much innuendo that's being said by Nicola that he feels the tension absolutely because it's activating, it's like the Mars activating his Venus and then what he's thinking about, oop, you know? But it's also, they are learning so much about the other's ideas and thoughts and perceptions of things by what is being asked of them as individuals from you know being in the show but they're being asked as individuals well what do you think about this about relationship what do you think about this perception blah 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 during the interview so they have all these questions being bombarded at them during the promo tour that are highlighting what do you think about this in relationship? What do you think about this in um, attraction? What do you think about this in intimacy? What do you, I mean, just think of, all, I mean, you literally could go through all the questions that they were asked and then think about these souls coming together who have attraction, natural attraction, genuine attraction to each other, then held, holding it back while there's a, another scenario in the background that hasn't been really put out there yet, but definitely I believe that she knows at this point. If she hasn't, she will meet her in New York. Antonia is on the scene in the background. Pretty sure she's aware of it. If she's not, she's going to get the big shock in New York, right? So that is, and maybe that's when they're in the game playing the paddles of friend zone 
uh, friend zone love paddles and talking about things and perceptions. There are so many innuendos in that little game. It's super good. There was so much that went down in the interviews in, in Italy that shows that that playback of, yes, we're talking about the show of Colin and Penelope. And I think they did that at the friend zone love paddle and you know we're, we're talking about Colin Pen and Penelope but it's their perceptions as well it is their insights from having navigated that storyline navigated presenting the characters what they thought about their characters acting so and so you know they have opinions about how Colin was acting they have opinions how you know Penelope was acting right like through their their story of their arc of their story and I think that is rich, rich material for them as souls to go, and what do you think? And what is your perception? And what is your behavior? How are you acting, reacting? Where are your blocks? How are you communicating? Are you, is it landing? Is it being heard? Someone pointed out to me, and I don't know which interview it was, but it was mentioned, maybe it was a post on her Instagram or something that she posted something about a book that was, she was sharing a book that she was reading about how to have better communication skills, something to that nature. How significant is that with an, an Aries Mars in the third house of communication and what she perceives, you know, the instincts of someone. It's like she's reading people's, her perception is of the instincts. And so she communicates that directly. And of course she will communicate something and that's her humor too. So it's the, 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 the thing that we love about her, but it also can trip her up on occasion, but it's where she is to go. Her soul has North node, in Aries. So she's doing the work. I love to see that because it is, okay, uh, understand how you communicate, how it's perceived and how it's received. Because if you want to be in relationship, if you want to change the arc of a relationship or how you are received or perceived, you know, do some homework. And she's doing homework, right? You know, and that's what I give to people when clients come to see me and they're wondering about how can I be in relationship, you know, what or stumbling blocks. One of the, the key things is, do you understand how the other communicates? Even if you're a heterosexual woman trying to have a relationship with a heterosexual man, or if you're, you know, maybe you are bi, maybe you're gay. I mean, whatever you're, you know, I've talked to gay men and what is your partner who plays what role in the partnership and how are you communicating? What are the, what are the boundaries that you have set? And um, how is that? And then how is your history coming into the storyline of the moment are you dragging in your past you know things that are tripping you up and how you are conditioned to think some way or perceive some way and then how might you change that story if you want to hold a committed loving relationship yeah so she's doing the homework right and he's going to be learning about how to do his homework but his is a longer journey but a lot was revealed in these in this the interview of Milan that were taking place. And his experience is, I think he went into some of the interviews with an idea about himself, but he was going to be learning so much about the uh, relationship through the period of the promo tour. Because imagine behind the scenes, he has a kind of relationship going on that's been held private into the back. But the dynamics of that are going to change as the summer goes on, right? I mean, a lot going on with that. And But he's getting perception of what other people think about lovers, about fifth house Venusian themes. I mean, fifth house, this part, his creativity. It's not just creativity. It's also, you have to have passion. It's also the house of children. <laughs> but it's his Jupiter is responsible for that, but the Jupiter is going, it's getting a little, a lot of chaotic energy. So he's got a, getting a lot of different perspectives and he's trying to digest them and, and go, hmm, what do I think about that? But it will take him time to digest that, right? And he's losing a little bit of energy with the south node on his own Jupiter. So it's almost like he has having to surrender something he used to think about what it means to be lovers, what it means about his, the way he thought of a character, okay, that he's created. So I think, this is my hunch, is I think he was super surprised by people taken aback when they said, when there was comments from the fans or something about the ick of Colin putting on a pretense. I think he had to get that from Nicola about what the perception is, was in that 
how he came back. They, I mean, he knew about them being angry at the end of season two, where he said the thing in the group with the the with the men, with the guys. But I, it's more like bro, all the bros hanging out, and him saying, um, in and Colin saying to them that he would not court daily uh, Penelope. You know, not in his wildest dreams, but in the wildest dreams is exactly what he wanted later. <laughs> But it's more that actual Luke Newton during this promo tour, during Milan, is getting kind of this, it's just unfolding something within his own psyche. In the de- He's going through a massive transformation because of what he's going to be experiencing. It's in the seed here as it was in Australia. So, but this is like new moment, new moon, new moon in Taurus. And so it's really going to start taking off the more that they go continue on this path of the promo tour and but at the, in milan the south node is on his jupiter so it's accentuating his fifth house of the Venusian like lovers themes and his creativity thoughts on children these kind of things but it's also jupiter is also responsible for his eighth house and the eighth house is a blind spot for him but it is the place where if someone has a lot of in the, in the water signs which he does he has you know he has the moon he has mars he has juno he he has Pluto and he has the psyche, but there's a transit going on in his eighth house, which is highlighting other people's values to him, but it takes time for him to receive them from the collective as they do stuff on social media. He picks up on opinions and things like this. And, you know, it kind of breaks him out of the illusion a bit of what people, what he thought people might think, right? So it's also activating psychic energy. So he's getting so much bombardment of energy but he has to surrender to some idea about how he's been perceiving how he's been connecting about people in relationships i think he was probably in uh taking mental note significantly by some of the things that nicola would say and reveal in interviews and that's in the, his chart especially in milan Okay, it's probably also present within Verona, but definitely at the new moon moment in Milan and over the next couple of days. And, you know, that's going to be a moon in Taurus and then a moon in Gemini. And I'll have to look if the moon had made it to Gemini by the time they're in Verona, I believe so, but I'll take a look. So it starts off in that career space, but then there's two things that are happening, I think, within Italy. It's highlighting past life stuff for Luke also, because that moon will eventually enter into Gemini and then highlight be moving towards his south his own south node so he's going to have a kind of a new awareness about and he may be getting chatter from you know as someone who's close to him Antonia while he's on the tour I don't know if she is in in Italy when they're doing those parts of the tour at that point I know when he goes to New York she's there and there's other times right but definitely that could be a background chatter that he's dealing with because of the visibility of what is being coming out from those interviews coming out from the press coming out i mean can you imagine being a young person antonia 20 what is she 23 so young and having all that imagery and and all that perception landing on someone that you might be trying to have a relationship whatever people want to define or not define about it but if you just kind of step back for just a moment put yourself in those shoes and even if they're immature okay it's still a lot (laughs) to, to walk through but he it's all kind of like to me building towards the karmic moment that those souls are participating in for that to land okay it has to be big because of loop signature of all that aquarius square his scorpio and it has to open up that jealousy it has to open up that piece to understand himself and his self-image and what he create you know what he's trying to understand about other and the significant other and how important the values that his significant other hold is so important for that if he wants to be in a long-term relationship he almost needs a someone like nicola can handle the you know kind of the negative stuff that comes up because she manages it she understands and how to step back from it someone who's younger and not been there would get lost by a tidal wave okay or actively depending on their ego want to activate it more to try to have their own leo expressed Okay, so, but that's a whole nother video. I'm not going to go into her video. I'm not going to go into Antonia's astrology right now. I will, I will definitely do that in another video to look at Luke and her chart so you can see how they active, activate each other and especially her. But 
you have also, you know, the soul is trying to learn something from the connection. I think it's a very deep connection with Nicola because of what they've already been through and what has already been built by their friendship and also the feelings that have emerged and what we have seen. So there's just a longer track record, right? So, but Luke is learning about perception. He's learning about how to communicate something that he is attracted to or what he's attracted about someone. And I, we hear that in the interviews, he actually says something that I thought was really good. And I think I pointed out, he pointed out in one of the interviews in Milan that they talked about in the story, what was, what was so attractive. And he said, uh, in quotes, it completely attractive for someone to own exactly who they are. Those words came out of Luke. Luke Newton's mouth. Completely attractive for someone to own exactly who they are. So he's saying that, but I it's almost like he's building that up for himself. So he has to rise to that himself. Okay, who are you really? And what are you going to bring into you, you know, what you are attracted to? You might get a first. Yeah, you have, I'm sure you've date. you know, people are very interested in relationships and, you know, maybe you've dated somebody who showed up a certain way in the first part of the relationship. And then as time goes on, you know, the veil of who the illusion starts to fall. And then the real person of who they actually are behind at home, that reality emerges more. Right. And then it's like, am I, you know, how is this attraction? And, you know, and to be in a loving relationship, there's always kind of like, okay, this person's going to, you know, reflect back to me uh, and remind me of the, the shit show that I might not show the public or the, <laughs> the parts of myself that, oh my gosh, I, that's very difficult for me. Can you love me even in that place? That is what's, to me, so important about being in a committed relationship. Can you love me even in that place where I am showing my weakness? I am showing the parts of me that I think might be unlovable. That's what Luke Newton is learning because to be exactly who you are is to drop all the pretense. And I think back and forth, the Nicola and Luke appeared to be showing that at least through those interviews, it appeared to be showing that. And so I think that might be a, some of the fans are like, oh, can you see it's right in front of you, bro? Right. But he was already engaged with something that started because there was probably some stop put on any further connection, probably by Nicola, uh, maybe in 23. So he's just living his life trying to, you know, okay. And being attracted to, you know, whatever his friends might like, Ooh, Hey, you know, this or that, or what he might've found online. You know, I've dated online, you know, who do you find attractive? You kind of go for the visual, like, what am I attracted to do? But it's more like, Ugh, you might have good looks, but you're a dud, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Been around that rodeo. No, but there's, yeah. Dating is such an interesting <laughs> conundrum. I'm married now. Thank God. <laughs> But I think, you know, being in a relationship and I have been married before. So my, my current husband, I love him. He's so dear to me, but we have gone head to head on some things and it's just like, ah, okay. I have to grow, you know, a little bit because this is like putting a lot of focus on that. And, you know, so that's what love can do is it can help you have to like, uh, grow through it and you go through it together by having really hard conversations that sometimes you will come head to head on something and you're going to have to like figure out like how are we going to navigate this you're still my person you're st i love you how do we get over this hump that we've hit this wall you know and if you can't then the, the relationship won't survive right so that's important luke newton is learning so much and so is she she's learning different things so i mean milan italy uh so much going on between both of them and at different cycles i think and i covered in another video when i was doing their individual charts on stuff that they're both in a jupiter this is traditional astrology perspective they're both jupiter is super important this year while he's 31 and she's 37 so jupiter being accentuated and having a whole new cycle with uranus hit right before the promo tour for these two is just ginormous and it really really activates his eighth house and his understanding getting to understand this part of his chart his blind spot other people's values um sex and the taboo things he's understanding something about his sexual image 
okay? His sensuality, but it's more about other people's values, maybe other people's money, but it's he's learning so much, right? And she is, you know, what she is receiving under the second house. I mean, Jupiter is responsible for not only Pisces, like his Pisces, her Pisces. That is the Lord of the year for both of them is the Pisces house, Jupiter. But Jupiter is also like, where is it in the, in the chart? It's in his third house of communication and it's in her, her second second house of value, self-confidence, money, these kind of things, assets. But so all of those kind of themes are just pop, you know, really populating for both of them in, you know, different areas of life. When they have their birthdays next year, his birthday is February 5th. Her birthday is, well, her birthday's first. Her birthday is January 9th, right? So as we get into next year, it's really going to have an interesting shift because it'll shift away from the Jupiter being the Lord of the year. And the Jupiter being in Gemini amplified kind of the Antonia and the South Node stuff for Luke as a part of that. So, you know, that's important to kind of keep in mind. It was just the perfect divine timing for the, everything to, to crest into that karmic wave breaking. Okay. And then the, what that, that just sets up everything to it for it to, to, okay, you have to pay attention to this and then to work this out. Cause if you want to come back together and have a, a, a meaningful relationship, you have to iron out these areas of your chart that can hinder your success in having a relationship. Okay. But also next year when that's Luke, it'll be Mars. And at the same time next year, there's a major event like planet transit for them when that happens. So I do believe that Nicola has a movie that she signed up for, which she's the mother of um, a daughter who is taken to some Middle East country and she's fighting for her. So very Martian activity, you know, and then that will amplify emotion. It will be an emotional drama as it pertains to her career. And that one will be stunning probably because of we are, we'll see a whole different perspective of Nicola in her career. Okay. She's still doing Bridgerton. So that's still a part of it, but I think she will film probably in 25. I don't know when they'll actually do the production, but, but I'm assuming it's 25 because then that gives her the freedom to do promo stuff in 26, maybe some promo. She won't be maybe as extensive, but for Bridgerton, but who knows? Um, but for Luke, that will set up his ninth house. The Venus, his Venus is going to be super activated by the Neptune that comes to his Venus. And so that will be like a complete transformation of his Venus. So there's a potential for us to see him emerge with maybe something that's really, really unexpected in what he is going to do in his career. So he may take a hard shift on, maybe he gets something on Broadway. I would still love to see that, that shift from going back to the music part in him being on the stage and all that so to land something that would be exquisite to see him get that or he could have a role that is completely what we're not used to when we see an about turn on that okay but it's also how he may communicate what he is perceiving how he, that when the neptune hits his venus by transit it's going to be huge 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 and we're definitely going to see it in a such a magnified way because it when his birthday comes it'll be really really significant because the venus is in the house but mars is very important and his mars is in cancer so there might be some emotional stuff that comes out and what he's passionate about and these kinds of things and that how that shapes you know maybe him pulling back some because his mars is in the 12th house there might be a bleed through of unconscious material but he will feel protective okay so there's something to that okay yeah it's really hard to explicitly say how that outer planet of Neptune when it lands on his Venus and it lands on her Mars will activate them. It activates where it is in their chart but because he's born with um, the Neptune and the Uranus together it's very transpersonal and it'll be in a collective big perspective because he's already in the public, li public eye but it'll be around his work but it'll be something incredibly different. Uh, it's hard for me to describe. For her it'll be how she communicates and, and the perception of what she kind of maybe puts not only does she put forward in her career because that's her Mars who's Mars
Mars co-rules Scorpio and Pluto is the other co-ruler from a evolutionary astrology standpoint and that's in her so there will be a transformation that we will start to see in her more dramatic presentation of her art you know being in a drama more drama serious drama but I wonder if she doesn't pick up a comedy because she is known for her comedy so I wonder in the year of 2025 after her birthday if she picks up a contract a gig you know a movie or something that she's doing that has way more comedy I believe Big Mood is going to be doing more but I can't remember if that going to land later or what I don't know what the the actual is on that but that's important to kind of understand how these how their souls are kind of activating getting activated by planetary transits as above so below so below as above so this is just against you know part of them moving in their life but it has extraordinary transpersonal tones to it so it's exploding for them in ways that it's really hard to articulate how that's going to be it's huge transformation I wonder if if Nicola's influence with Luke will put him more into a social activism type frame as well. Maybe he does stuff more around charity work and things that he believes in. And we maybe we see more of that um, because that's his Mars in Cancer. That's a, it's got that in his subconscious mind about being a protector. So I hope, you know, I kind of went off a little bit on that for the future, but I think it's important to like understand like some of the components of what was happening on the promo tour and how that may will f frame things for the future. Okay. Because astrology kind of, we look at things, it's easy to understand and do a divination of sorts on the charts as it pertains to the past and even speak to the archetypal na nature of the present because you can take the past and bring it to the present and say this is more likely what you're feeling right now because I have the patterns of the past and the pattern of what we're experiencing now and what we've experienced in the past of what has not been healed will be the thing that we project into the future so it's important to keep in mind like there is so much landing in their awareness during this period of time and how they're trying to shape themselves grow develop their skill develop you know just live their life and and have a life that you know they want to pursue their heart's desires and in, in all things so it's kind of like important to kind of understand how big this change is for both of them I mean, we already could say that from the everything that we've seen so far but it's it's so deep into the soul it's really deepening i think the grooves within their conscious you know into the unconscious mind by what is being experienced so they have a task ahead of them to heal some of the things that has happened this summer because it is that much more defined in their minds because of how big it got right because in the past life it might have not been this big and pronounced and it's all how do i say this like when i first got interested in them from the eros and psyche that was in the show of course but it was planned from the beginning because of what we have in the butterflies of the featheringtons that is part of the psyche uh, symbolism and i think it's important to realize like this is planned from day one right like what how shondo envisioned them but to pull them from four you know season four from the book four into season three was very that was specific decision by shonda and team right the writers and stuff and to execute that in season three versus season four and to me it's divine timing based on everything so there's something to me at a higher level that's been like initiated decided at the soul level for that to even take place it's like a blueprint I guess <laughs> There's no other way I can say it because we don't have with Luke Thompson and nor with Claudia Jesse do we have them on social media any kind of information that gives us insight into their archetypal specifics because we don't. Claudia Jesse is a Scorpio son, so she's probably going to be very close with her kind of understanding of her astrology. Her private life will be very private Scorpio so it makes me wonder about Luke Thompson's rising sign I wonder is he a Scorpio Scorpio rising so he's not going to do that at all like he's going to be tight on that or you know that kind of perception but he could have a different rising sign I'd have to test it but again you have to have a lot of dates to create a rising sign from a rectified chart I'd rather have them speak to it and give us like at least a hunch that would be great if that was pulled out um in promo tour uh later for season four that would be lovely hint hint Shonda and team no that would be or other interviewers like people from the BuzzFeed I mean they pulled that out and we got it right so but that would be that you know Luke Thompson would actually have to be looking at his astrology it's more inclined that it was Nicola who would 
encouraged Luke to look at it, and that's why they were looking at it, based on the to doom. Maybe that's repeated. I don't know. I think it's interesting. And given the Aquarius energy that sit, sits with Julia Quinn, maybe that happens. I don't know. What else I want to point out about uh, Milan before I go on? I think I've covered most. Oh, they spoke to the reality of filming and the and filming the intensity, like the 12, 16 hour days and, you know, what that really means to them. And I think in that same interview, they talked about Luke had information about dating online and Nicola did not have, nor the interview or have any awareness of what it meant to be, you know, what was it like to date now versus dating back in the Regency era, you know, and they talked about that in one of the interviews. And I thought that was interesting because Nicola's like, I don't have a clue about that. So everything she's ever, you know, experience in the dating world would have been from people that she knew in her small circles or whatever, or from school or whatnot, where Luke has because of his recent experience with, with Raya. I don't know the online one that he used, but I mean, he, he spoke to it like, no, you're on your own. <laughs> And in back in the Regency, you'd have, you know, Lady Danbury and Mother Bridget, you know, yeah, Violet helping out, <laughs> right? So I think that's fun to like kind of explore what they said there and what, what, what it revealed to them about how difficult it is to like engage with other people in like the dating scene. That was fun. And what other things do I want to point out before? I still think one of the best interviews during that period in Milan was the Friend Zone Love Paddles interview and what it, it really revealed so many things to us. And them also talking about ideal type that was also in there and how that perception was received on both sides. <laughs> oh, another thing that we it was also hinted at was in Milan where she's doing when they're in the friend zone and love paddles interview that she speaks in the Penelope accent in a different accent, you know, a little bit more posh and, um, <laughs> How he picks up on that and and tells her, yeah, if you do that, you know, do Penelope in that voice, you know, and then she's like hits him with the paddle. So, but it's that is showing his attraction to that playfulness, but it's the accent that kind of foreign, but it's how it's perceived by Luke. And we have it in Milan, but we also had it in Australia where she does the accent in the Australian accent. And then also was something that he showed his attraction to that. So we're getting like insights and hints based on these interviews and the perception of her behavior and her ability to do accents and her playfulness. It's kind of a, I think it's multi-layered there. It's not just the playfulness, but it's also that it's quite sexy to Luke Newton and that shows up and we, we all got excited about that and we have fun with that. But I think... That covers a lot of what I wanted to discuss about Milan, and I hope you enjoyed this portion, and then we're going to go and take a peek at Verona. So let's see what I have. I have them separate on the other charts, so let's take, I have these side by side for, I had them side by side for Milan, but let me think. I think I have them 